Welcome to Season 2 of Let's Break Up, Toxic Workplace Stories. Join hosts Nicola and Gina as they tackle workplace toxicity head-on. Real-life stories, well-being, and standing against toxicity await you. Let's break up with toxic workplaces and create a revolution of positivity together. As a disclaimer, Nicola and Gina's opinions are solely their own and don't represent professional advice. It's just their perspective, so form your own conclusions. Heads up! This podcast may contain adult content and explicit language. So let's dive in and break up with toxic workplaces. So, Nicola, do we just want to jump right in or? Let's let's jump straight in. Zuhara, do you want to introduce yourself and give us a little bit of information about what industry you work in? A little bit of information around, you know, kind of where you are because you're not anywhere in our locations in the world. (laughs) Sure. So I'm Zuhara Miriam. I'm a marketing and PR expert. I've been working as a freelancer for over five years now. And um, at the moment, I'm working with Ota PR. I'm based in Kenya. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. can you give us sort of like an idea of what your day-to-day tasks typically are in your position so that when you tell us your story, we kind of might be able to understand it a little bit better? Sure. Uh, so basically, as a PR person, um, we working with the agency, we have different clientels. So we get to understand the clientele, build their bios for them, and then create different kind of pitches that can be able to have them as an industry authority spokespeople in their particular niche market so that Mm -hmm. it can be able to help, you know, place the brand in front of a lot of other people and also help to propel their brand and also, you know, build sales. So basically it's uh, like marketing, but in a wider spectrum. Okay. So yeah. how did you, we know which job you're going to talk about, but our listeners don't. So can you tell us how you kind of came across the position, um, how it was presented to you? Give us a little background on this particular job that you're going to take us through. So I met her uh, through the freelancers platform that was free up. And then we started working until the, the project ended. After that, she approached me later on and she was like, you know, I'm, I'm putting a team together so that I can be able to come up with this agency and work, work it on a broader, you know, perspect. And then she was targeting women because she wanted it to be a women-led kind of organized agency working with different women as well. So that is how I came to get to know her. So when she approached me, we did a contract with her and I was like, okay, this looks like an amazing opportunity and also the intention is good. So I'd like to mm-hmm. be part of the team. And that's how we started working together. So what was your, um, did you have an employment agreement or a contract or anything like that? Yes. Yes, we did. I was working as her PR manager full time. Yeah. Okay. And so, and like, because, and I don't want to jump, jump ahead, but we know uh-huh. that things go pear shaped. So I'm curious to know when you got the employment contract to sign, Were there any like weird clauses or anything in there that kind of stuck out to you as maybe a red flag at the time? Or Uh, not really. Mm -hmm. Sidebar, did you not even read it fully? Like I probably would not have. I probably just been like sign whatever. (laughs) Yeah, actually, I did read it, uh, not you you know with an angle of something was going to go wrong in future. So I did read it, you know, just to see the kind of job description I have, the number of hours I'll be working and that the amount we have agreed as payment has been captured correctly. So there was nothing that you were like, hmm, that sounds weird and then never asked about it or, you know, like, or just was able to kind of explain it away in your own head? Because I feel like that's what happens in toxic workplaces. You're like, they probably don't mean that because that sounds insane. And then you're like, oh, it's been like, Fast forward six months and you're like, wait, they did mean that. They are insane. (laughs) (laughs) No, basically, I think she pulled it from somewhere and just put it together. So everything seemed to flow at that particular time. Remember, Mm -hmm. this is somebody who also has been working with organizations in terms of, you know, employee culture and all that. So I'm assuming. Yeah, so Nicola and I kind of did a little bit of a, I I wouldn't say a deep dive, but we got curious (laughs) after we first talked to you. 
Are, are we allowed to say her name or her organization? Yes. yes. Yeah. Wasn't her, that's okay. Wasn't her name Catherine? Catherine? Yeah, it is. Okay. Catherine Tuamine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because when so, we went on the website, it was uh -huh. really weird. Like everything was weird. Um, and uh -huh. we did our best effort to try and contact her. We contacted her through, you know, the main website, LinkedIn. And then also, and then her other thing, which I can't wait for us to get to the oh, culture, cult, what is it called again? Culture cure. Culture cure. Culture cure. Yeah. Okay. So I can't yeah. wait for us to get into that, but we did reach out to her because we wanted to hear her side, maybe you know, sometimes, you know, there, the truth is in the middle somewhere, but yeah. we, I don't know if we necessarily believe that, but, um, I think we're on your side, but I think we just wanted to kind of get an yeah. idea of like, why would you do this? Like, I don't want to give too much away, but like, if it was something serious, like the company's going bankrupt or, yeah, or, you know, something like just tell, just tell your employees, be like, I fucked up. I accidentally like you could paint it however you want, but just be honest about it. Like you would have been pissed, but you would have been like, mm -hmm. at least they told me that this was happening, you know? You know, like yeah, but the weird this be to have been because you can't tell your employees that, you know, I'm broke, we are bankrupt, and you're taking vacations and clients. Well, are we're paying, gonna get to that. So it's <laughs> we're gonna get to that. <laughs> I'm gonna get there. Yeah, <laughs> but I think I think what Nicole and I were we were a we were I think part of us were like maybe we can like ambush her and she'll have to come up with something um, on the spot. Uh, maybe she comes up with some of the money she owes you. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. So basically, this woman and we are gonna get into it. Um, ends up not paying you for your work that has been clearly documented. Like you came with receipts. Like you didn't just yeah. allege this. You came with receipts. So um, from all the information that was presented to us, we believe you, Zahara. So um, I think Nicola and I's idea was just to see if she would come on the show and kind of be like, hey, what's going on? And she didn't respond to any of our inquiries. So there wasn't too much we could do past that, but we did reach out um, to all, to both her regular marketing site. And when we also looked at her, should we, like, can we just quickly talk about her resume or whatever that she has on the marketing yeah. site? It's like she had one internship and then all of a sudden now she's freelance and she's like working for Coca-Cola and all these things. I'm like, and she's, a, a, but not just freelancing. She's a really skilled PR agency person where it's like you had one you were an intern for like a, a summer somewhere and now you're skilled marketer uh -huh. all right so you get hired by her tell us what are the first things that you're like hmm this seems strange That's kind of the first red flag oh, let's go yeah. with beige flags or pink <laughs> flags any pink flags um i think she went all in the first time was um the non-existent accountant because uh we agreed that oh, the right, salary I forgot about paid... this. I love this. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we agreed the salary would be paid by a specific date. That was usually by fifth. So comes fifth, it's tenth and tenth. We're almost midway the next month. And she's like, you know, I've talked to the accountant. She, he's still putting something together and all that. But we never actually go to meet the accountant or even just get an email randomly from the accountant nothing so to date i still don't know if the accountant exists or she was still the accountant but that is when you know i started seeing the red flag because uh two months in you have not received your salary and then she'll come and pay maybe half of it and then maybe try and clear and then again the next month is going to be the same thing but you know here you are you're working with the clients you know they are paying because you know there's the back email confirmed receipt of the payment and all that and then she'll be out like I'm going on a vacation. So most of the time we were running the organization as the, you know, as the employees and she'll go have fun and that's about it. And then at one point when I realized something was not 100% okay was I brought in a client. So, you know, for the full package. And one time she was like, you know, Zuhura, I don't think I'm happy with how you guys are handling my, you know, I'm not seeing the results of what I'm paying for. For PR, it's there because, you know, you can't, I can't lie that, you know, uh, I'm publishing stuff and they cannot see it on the links on the site. So she was like, for PR, that one can be documented. But on this other side, I don't see the value for my money. 
And she actually asked for a meeting for the same. So I did talk to Catherine and ask, okay, what's going on? Is there a disconnect on how we are doing her campaign? Because if that's the case, why don't we try and see how we can link the, you know, PR with uh, social media and other marketing and see how we can best expose, you know, build her brand. And eventually she pulled out, you know, Catherine made an excuse like, no, she's just, you know, someone else, she's mad. She doesn't know how to interact with people. So I'll be letting her go. She, she won't be renewing the package only to come and learn later that she pulled out. So that was question marks for me. And then months in, one of our colleagues resigned and she hadn't paid her also for like that month. And that is the reason she resigned. But when we asked, you know, she came and started, our clients were complaining about her work. She's not doing her work well. And it's ironic because the clients were so happy that they even paid her an extra bonus for the good job she had done for them. So that also started raising, you know, the pink, more like the red flag, but we tried to paint them pink just so that we can get by. Right. And then come three months in, she's owing me over 10,000 USD and I I'm realizing, okay, this is not good. But now what kept me going for the re uh, remaining part of the month was I didn't want to leave the clients hanging because you can't just wake up and say, you know, I'm not working until I get my pay. And this is somebody you're handling because we directly talk to the clients uh, every day. So you need to give them an update. You need to let them know what, how the account is doing and all that. So I gave my notice and told her, um, I'll be handling each of my clients until the end of their tenure. And after that, if you haven't cleared with my, uh, with me, then this is it. I'll have to resign. And she came with a counter off and she was like, you know, when you started this organization, um, I overquoted in terms of how much I'm supposed to be paying you guys monthly. And that is why you're not doing so well. And I even came up with ideas like, why don't you try and do this, introduce the retainer package so that at least you're guaranteed every month you have something coming in. And then you can mm -hmm. introduce other smaller packages, yeah, for different clients so that you can be able to pull different kind of clients to ensure there is a consistent uh, cash flow. And mm -hmm. she's like, yeah, so if you are okay after the once, um, and then she was like, okay, let's review your contract so that at the end of this month, uh, if you agree to it, we can revise how I'll be paying you the, the package I'll be earning. So we agreed that if she clears my debt, by that time, then I can consider taking in the new package because that will be on need uh, and on client basis. But come that end of the month, nothing happened. So that's when the roller coaster began. Okay, so uh, how did it? So how did it start? The roller coaster. Um, mentally, uh, in terms of delay, in terms of payments, and then excuses after excuses. So once I handed in my resignation. Um, later on now, after fully resigned, she was like, um, one client is complaining that you the, the work was not well done and you are solely handling that client. So this is your fault. That means I'll have to deduct from whatever I owe you uh, 1500 USD to repay that client back. So the good thing was I pulled up my email, um, you know, the email conversation and the trailers we've been having with the client and was like, this is my communication to the client. This is me asking her to give me one, two, three things. And according to our contract, if you're asking for some items from the client and they do not communicate back, they cannot penalize you for that. And I was consistent in terms of reaching out. And whatever I've been able to work, this is the report I compiled. Here you go. You can show it to the client with the same. But I was like, okay, so there's nothing she's going to penalize us because we have done our part in terms of according to the agreement of the contract, we had the no-show clause where if the client does not get back to you with the information you need for a specific period, then once the contract is done, she cannot, they cannot ask for a refund or you know, an extension right. for whatever has not been done. Yeah. Right. So right. That one, I, I think I beat her to it. So she didn't know how to react. And she was like, yeah, yeah, you have a point. So let's see how it goes. But I'm working on something. The accountant is working on some money. And then a few days, or rather a few weeks in, I realized that I've been blocked from Slack. So I couldn't contact her through the Slack channel that we used to communicate. So I switched to email. And I was like, okay, okay we have this amount pending. So when are you going to pay me? And then come October, November, December, January. In February, I told her, you know, if you're not going to pay, I think I'll have to take legal action. So she went ahead and paid me around 2,000 USD. 
now leaving a balance of the 4,200 USD. So that one I think mm -hmm. was just to silence me. She was like, yeah, I'm working for the remainder of the amount and then I'm going to clear it with you. And then, yeah, we've been having the back and forth. And then I realized she has blocked me also on email. I, I couldn't contact her because whenever I send out the email and then it will bounce back. So, yeah, I think my final email to her was like, you know what, I think why it has reached, even if you don't get to pay me, but it's time I go and tell my story so that people can get to know the kind of person you are, because you, you have people working under you. These people are parents, they have kids, they have responsibilities, and they're doing a full-time job for you, but you can afford to, you know, spend time or money that you're earning from the clients they're working for to go out on vacations, but you can't afford to pay them. So people so are either long, lagging behind. Mm -hmm. How long did you actually work for her? And how many of those months did you actually get paid for? I think over a year. Okay. So yeah, so she kept dragging, but uh, now what we have left is a month. That's how much she owes you now, a month worth yes. of back pay, essentially. Okay, so... Yes. So you mentioned she was going out to on vacations. When was that mm -hmm. happening? To give us an idea of in, within the timeline, within the year that you were employed there, how often was she going on vacation? Where was she going? I, I need details. Um. Okay, she'll say she's going to work with a client outside the country, wherever, during the tenure of work, and then she'll go for like two weeks, three weeks, come back, and then you'll hear she's going to a different, you know, country, and then come back again. So the others, you could get to see it from the Facebook post, wherever she's gone or the kind of vacation she's having. But right. it is something that I've learned even recently. She's still been doing so. So, so is she? Yeah. Is her company still like around? Yes, yes. I even saw that I was replaced. Someone else was hired to fill my position. So it's still running. I find it weird that it's running because we tried to reach out, obviously, quite a lot on all of the email addresses on LinkedIn, you know, and we didn't go in with, you know, hey, we know the secret about you. It was more, hey, we'd like to connect, you know, kind of, <laughs> kind of like we have this podcast. Yeah, maybe it'll I didn't even some... say podcast. I was like, oh, we'd like to talk to you about, you know, your skills in the space, you know, <laughs> um, and nothing. She's probably on um, vacation, okay. Nicola. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But what <laughs> I also noticed was <laughs> during the time I was working for her, I landed her some of the interview opportunities with, you know, big organizations so that you can be awarded for the kind of, you know, movement you have in terms of in your field. And each mm -hmm. time she'll be like, um, I don't have time to work for it. So I kind of realized she's avoiding the limelight, but I was like, okay. Maybe she has a reason for that. Now it makes sense. But then I presume maybe she's too busy. She can handle, she's working with clients. But I realize if this is an opportunity to place you and, on a, and the organization out there, why would you jump on it? Because one of it, yeah, I think, was an award and she was nominated yeah. for it. Yeah. So yeah, maybe that that's why sense. she doesn't reach back out. Mm -hmm. Because maybe the house of cards will fall. Oh, yeah. Maybe like because like a lot of these big companies, they require like certain I mean, I'm speaking from my industry, but like they re like, for instance, they'll like, they'll need like certain audits before they can do work yeah. for you. So or work with you rather like for me, I work in manufacturing, so they need to make sure the factories are, you know, ESG, like socially, mm -hmm. environmentally, you know, um, economically responsible, yeah. all those things. Um and I'm wondering if some of those big companies would need, you know, the equivalent of that. Like maybe they would need to have access to like people's working, I don't know, their IDs, like make sure everyone's above board. You know, I don't know what that could be. Is there anything that you know mm -hmm. of, Nicola, in like marketing or PR that would be required? No, I'd say probably just a portfolio. Right? Because yeah. like, is there a way to verify or... The, even for like big big companies like i don't know like Coca -Cola, you would absolutely like if you're putting in a rfp or like a tender for a big company for sure you want to make sure that you know for new zealand as an example if you're putting in an rfp you absolutely need to state that you are meeting all your legal obligations and then mm -hmm. the big one there if it were for marketing or something it would be you know 
portfolio or proof that you can actually do what you say you're doing? So here's my thing. Maybe, and I'm just thinking about this, like it just popped into my head. Maybe she didn't want to work with these big companies because the expense, the outlay, (laughs) even though they're paying something, right? Like the outlay on the company's part might have been too much, too big that she couldn't afford. Um, (laughs) I don't know. Maybe it was something like that. Cause that seems very strange. Like if somebody came to me, like if anyone in my industry came to me, and was like, Oh, you know, Sephora wants to meet with you. I'd be like, hey. I'm on the next flight. I don't care. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm to <laughs> Singapore. Let me go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know like I would just be like, I'm on it. I'll do anything. Do you need to take an arm and a leg? Like, yeah, uh-huh. so that seems very weird that she would kind of shy away from that. So I'm sure there's some because mm-hmm. there's must be something that we're missing there. True. Okay, so how so what was the last communication you had with her? Um, I think it was around that February March. Mm-hmm. I can counter check, but after that she went silent. So and you've been blocked. The payment has been everything. Paying, yeah, yeah. Um, I tried reaching out to the uh, through a lawyer, and she was like, you know, well, there's this clause where freelancers can be charging interest on whatever amount that is pending, so you can include that. But I was like, that wasn't on the original contract per se. And then why don't you just clear my principal? And then if you feel like you want to pay the interest, you can go ahead and pay the interest because I'm not even pushing for interest. I'm just asking for you. Just want the for the money, money that, that you worked for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which makes sense. So after the- that. Just logic. Right. And it's like if <laughs> exactly and you're being you are actually being very gracious. Like I would have been like, pay me my money and pay me 15% interest, you horrible bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I would be like, Jim I'm Harris, absolutely... you're like, you just you just do you boo. Pay me when you can. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't that's the thing. Like, if it's someone just... like tries to F with my money, like I get mm-mm. Like I get real, like you're, you're way more gracious and generous than I would ever be. Um, mm-hmm. So did the lawyer reach out to her? Yeah, she did. And then she, uh, she sent him the same, same clause about, you know, uh, she can start charging interest. And then if it accrues for, I think around three years, then I don't know what happens. I didn't even go through that because what I told her was like, no, we don't need you to pay everything else. All you want is for you just to settle the principal pending amount and then the lawyer's fee, which is just a hundred USD for the right. demand letter. Yeah. So and so is the lawyer still in contact there. with her? No, she went radio silent and was like, okay, just chill. Let me do research and see what else, how else we can do. Because what I realized was if I was to press charges from my end, even if I was to win the case, I'll be forced to still travel to Australia to be able to whether it's to auction any of her things to be able to recover the money. So it wouldn't have made financial sense at that point. Right. And that's like, yeah. do, do you know she only hires like from Kenya area or where? No, where actually the uh, like, majority are from, from Philippines. Majority but are that from is cheap. Philippines. That's cheap labor. Yeah. That is cheap labor. <laughs> that's why that's fucked up. What is she doing? <laughs> okay, carry yeah. on. Mm-hmm. So I think it was the only Kenyan then, and then the rest were from Philippines and herself. But from the new um set of people I saw, I think the PR ladies from Australia, like her, and then there were two new recruits, I guess from Stess or something, I'm not sure. Okay. So yeah. that gives me like a little bit of a red flag because like everyone's remote. Everyone's in a different country. Yeah. She probably doesn't have any idea what those countries employment laws are like. And it's sure. harder. But, 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 it's but, harder. But, but, she's from Australia. The employment law in Australia is very robust. It's like ours. Yeah, Even for but, freelancers or contractors, like it's very specific. So if you are employing people from overseas, you would have to meet certain requirements in Australia. So I think she's striving for the fact that we don't know that information because I'm in Kenya. So whatever I'm doing, it will be based on what will our law do and all that. And right, then the contract you're familiar is with time. your your legal system in your country same with the philippines so like 
I would never know that what Nicola just said. I would mm-hmm. never have known that. I didn't know it before this moment. I just know it now. So that's my point. I think she's probably doing this because it's like a well, workaround. Not. It's like yeah. it's like a loophole kind of. So she can sure. get away and with whatever it is that she's getting in, away with. Uh-huh. Yeah, go ahead. And I think when we came in again, there was another face of, you know, employees who had left. And majority of them have been complaining, you know, there's been delay of salary. And when, when you ask for the salary, you're a bad person. You haven't been doing your work well. There's always something to accuse you so that you look like the bad person in the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, That's wild, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So amidst all of this, um, you dropped a nice little bombshell about culture cure can you explain what culture cure yeah. is and why it is laughable that this person um also i think she had like a 20 minute youtube video that was like seen by seven people something like that right nicola mm-hmm. um for this okay so to explain culture cure and how you found out about it and then nicola and i will start laughing um, so my payment started coming in for the first time when she paid. So it was under the culture queue. And she told us, you know, I, I ran this agency where I've been training our organizations on how to handle their employees, how they should treat their employees, ensure they belong, how they're supposed to be paid on time and all that, you know, everything to I'm keep losing the... my shit right now. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, so, and I remember when I was asking, I was like, I remember you told me you, you've been tra- No, we're just getting into the good parts. We're just By kidding. the way, I love your primary color jumper. It's like Thank such you. a school it's teacher my jumper. Pride jumper. I love it. I'm so cheerful because I'm at the office today. Training oh, organizations of this. So oh, no, wait, you froze. Yeah, you froze. You froze. You froze. You froze. You I think I froze. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> you it, you were explaining what Culture Cure supposedly does. She's supposedly teaching other companies how to run a company properly. Meanwhile, yeah. her only real experience in corporate, whatever corporate marketing has been, I believe it was one internship that we know for sure. Unclear. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, and do you, so you start getting paid from there. Yeah. So from so culture she, cure. So she starts, she explains to you what culture cure is. Okay. Then what happens? Yes. And then that's uh that is the same receipt, and I think addresses have been uh we've been receiving our pays from. So mm-hmm. when this starts uh, happening, you know, uh, you're not earning anything and the, there's delay in the salary, and when you try and raise it up, or when somebody resigns, they're the bad people. So I was like, okay, you say you're training organizations on how they're supposed to treat the employees how come you're not practicing the same with the organization because i mean you should be a living example if you know so well when you're delaying salaries it's going to affect these people you've taken especially those who are mothers you should be the last person you know practicing that and she's like no you know it's not that it's just the accountant i've been trying oh, to balance the, the accountant, I'm, accountant I'm who probably paid. didn't yeah. exist <laughs> the ghost accountant <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but not only it's, that it's like no on sense. the website on the website they have like a manifesto on like behavior and like a manifesto on how best to treat their own employees right mm-hmm. remember we went through the manifesto we did and we were like this is wild because now she's taken the time to write this bullshit and mm-hmm. doesn't even follow any of it so my question is, did we ever find out if she had any actual clients for Culture Cure? Like, what happened there? Because how, because my, here's my line of thinking. If you're getting paid from an organization that, I, it's like, it's, it's not for profit or it is for profit. It's for profit organization. Okay. But I'm wondering because it's like under this, like, I don't know, weird in a weird niche like maybe there was a tax benefit to getting paid through an organization like that like maybe it's it's not like an s corp or an llc it's you know a uh, one of the other formations that you know there could potentially be 
some sort of money savings via taxes. Like, cause I know if you're like, you know, if you're a nonprofit, you have special, there are special things that you are able to do in term, because you're not for profit, you have like tax breaks. So I'm wondering, you know, I don't know the laws in Australia, but I'm wondering if that's why it was happening. And I would love to know who the clients were for Culture Cure, because based on that website, it was very, I don't think it was like updated since like 2018 or 2019, right? Yeah. And it looked like it was just like cut and pasted from other things. That's true. Yeah. Like she probably Googled like best practice in workplace and like just like copied the text and changed a few words and, you know. Um, Okay. So culture cure, the irony. Um, Okay. So then what happens? No, she just, you know, rubbish that off and she was like, the accountant um, balancing mm-hmm. clients not paying. So the excuses kept going on and on. And I was like, okay, enough is enough. <laughs> okay. So at this point, has any of your other like fellow colleagues from your time working there, has any of them reached out to you? Has there been any other like information that was gathered from I don't know, just it seems like you're kind of keeping tabs on her. So has there been any kind of additional information that you found out after the fact? Um, I think before then, I just realized she was she was still going on the frequent vacations and that clients have been paying. So she just mm-hmm. wasn't paying me. That is the only thing that was going on. But with time, I realized one of those colleagues that I used to talk to, you know, I couldn't reach. I think she had blocked me or something. So I realized maybe it's from her or she got the directive you know you need to cut links with her if you want to stay in this organization so I understood that Uh uh-huh so yeah as far as you know were you the only employee who didn't get paid for time worked um as that now I think so because those who are left behind they said there's been you know the delays but I don't know if they eventually got paid or not because I couldn't reach them now yeah right of course because this is so bizarre. All right, Nicola, what are your thoughts? I just think like, you know, I think it's so curious because, you know, we've seen the emails, right? And it's just so like all the emails are so excusey. Like there's always something that is out of my control and this is the reason I can't yeah. pay you, but there's never really any concrete reason as to why she's not meeting those contractual obligations. Um, which I found really weird. Um, and then also I find it really weird that, you know, I think for me, my probably my biggest red flag is the fact that she has gone just from this internship and opened this business. And is I, I wonder if, you know, this kind of circles all the way back, Gina, to write it's Nicholas the favorite phrase. <laughs> right at the very beginning. Yeah. But I actually wonder if maybe she's immature in her understanding of how business works and doesn't actually understand that her behavior impacts others yet I don't know if she's at that point in her career how old is she do you know I think she's in her late 20s oh she'll be late 20s early 30s yeah no no one should be owning a company in your late 20s I one of my first I I did I actually started my company um my first company when I was around the same age and I completely mismanaged it I like that was a hundred percent my doing I didn't have any employees so it only ended up affecting like me but I but I also learned from it I was like okay if I go into business for myself or create something else, I'm going to have to learn from these stupid things that I did. Like I just, I had no idea how to like do a proper accounting. I, you know, I, it was just, there was, you know, so now we have an outside accountant. So it's like, that actually does exist. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. It's true. At and least, I can give you information. Made up her name and you're just like emailing (laughs) from her email address. Me? (laughs) Yeah. yeah, I read an article, not gonna lie. I read an article not that long ago that people, people in positions that are like, you know, I don't know, 
maybe higher up, maybe middle tier, um, will create their own assistant and it's really just them. And so they'll like call restaurants and they'll be like, yes, I am making a reservation for Mr. Smith and he must come in. And like, they're a lot bitchier and then they get shit done, but it's really this, it's really them. And I was like, that's amazing. I should start doing that. <laughs> so on board. Oh my God. What would your assistant <laughs> be? I don't know. I don't know. I would have to really think about it. Cause like, it would have to be something like <clears throat> unique. So, okay, so my, like, if I'm going to give a fake name, like, you know, when you go to a house and you look at a house and they're like, write your name down to show you at the house. I always you're like Sarah, Sarah Summers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I like it. So your fake assistant would be Sarah Summers? <laughs> Absolutely. She would be. If you're getting an email from Sarah Summers, know that it's me. That's you. <laughs> Unless there's a Sarah Summer who wants to be my, my assistant I won't pay you <laughs> I I love Sarah Summers um uh-huh. there was also okay Zuhara this- what would your assistant's name be yeah what would your fake assistant I think I go with Susan Susan they get things done hello this she's definitely or- mine would be Karen <laughs> mine would be Karen uh-huh. yeah because Karen would be like um, you clearly can't handle this problem, so I'm gonna have to speak to your supervisor. Sorry. All right. I, so wait. So we. I truly don't believe yeah. the accountant existed. I don't. Mm-hmm. Because even for me, like my first company, I didn't know what I was doing, and I didn't. I was not even wise enough to fake an accountant. Also, this was like twenty, no, two thousand, like eight, maybe. So I don't think mm-hmm. like anyone was so savvy yet with like you know anyway uh-huh. um but I remember when one of the clients was venting and she was like um you know she I think she took the time and decided to go to social media and see what you have done and she was like if you own the organization and you don't even have a you know social media account so how are you going to do marketing for someone else when you cannot even manage your own even the company didn't have a social media profile and all that Wait, what, what? Yeah. What? Wait. Hold on. Yeah. Let me just rewind. So you're saying, just to be clear for the people in the back, you're saying she was in social media and like marketing management, and not only did the company did Culture Care have an Instagram presence? No, I no. Didn't see one. So none yeah. of her companies actually have an Instagram presence. And they're not doing no, any. Not so how did you get new clients? I'm so confused. Yeah, where are these clients? I, think, I don't know. I don't know if she reached out from her previous contacts or something. Yeah, so she should be a outreach because for the LinkedIn profile for the Catalyst uh, brand uh, strategy, I'm the one who created it and started managing it. So where I dropped off, that's where everything stopped. Okay. So yeah, as of now, what do you hope to have happen with this situation? What is your biggest hope? I mean, of course you would like to be paid, but do you, do you feel like you're actually going to get paid? Honestly, I don't know, but I think from what I know is I've learned a lot from this whole experience, because right now, if somebody is sending me out a contract, I need to see, you know, the whole process because with her, I just had the interview. Here's the contract. Let's start working. So it was all that at once. I didn't take time to realize, okay, you know, we don't have a HR in this organization and I've never met the accountant and we don't do regular, you know, company meetings just to update the internal kind of meetings because yeah. most of the meetings were we meeting the clients and then maybe updates in terms of this and that. And I remember we were having, we were given a Christmas bonus of, was it $10? $10? Yeah, I think, they're about. It was less than $100, actually. I'd be like, yes. I don't even want it at this point. I'd be like, this is insulting. I don't even want it. Um. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's terrible. Um. <laughs> so at this point, I don't know. Nicola, do you think she's going to get paid? I don't. I don't think you're going to get paid. 
at this point? Um, actually, I've, I've reached out to an Australian debt collecting company. So I'll be talking oh. with them tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to I see how that story. goes. <laughs> okay. But so, my feeling is if she has the balls to ignore a lawyer and to just cut you completely out, she's whatever whatever these debt because even debt collectors and it's not like back in the day when like a debt collector would go to your door and be like give me the fucking money like it's all done you know virtually basically so there's really mm -hmm. not much unless you're like getting involved with like the mafia <laughs> like they're not they're not gonna go make house calls you know they might call mm -hmm. you incessantly or bug you incessantly but if she has no intention mm -hmm. of paying Unless there's something different sure. going on in Australia, she's not going to pay. I think they say something like um they'll have her listed and then maybe her credit score will go down or something. So most businesses don't want that. Yeah, I mean, but... we'll see. I'd be very interested. I just feel like her credit score is probably garbage anyway, considering how she manages money. <laughs> so what's another hit on yeah. her credit score? It's like garbage, garbage, <laughs> less garbage. <laughs> You know, it's uh -huh. like, um, I, so ridiculous. I think like, like I, my wish for you is just that people become, people hear your story and they're wary of this. Like, I do think post COVID and during COVID, all of this remote work from all over the place brings its own host of issues like this, like what, so um, yep. And so it seems kind of crazy like that it's being used that like it's kind of um like I just feel like there's so many other issues that that brings you know just being remote and various different um you know just various different countries involved like Nicola you had that issue with our company like we didn't we didn't know under whose jur jur jurisdiction like your employment contract was even you know like which it so definitely was New Zealand so I should have actually well we found that out later yeah um so it's like I just feel like working remotely having these issues are like they're going to be more prevalent so I hope that people hear your story and that they could safeguard themselves from this because sure. you were basically doing free labor yeah right she wasn't even like buying you lunch or anything like free labor so it's like it's like um yeah so what do you think Nicola what do you think the takeaway here is for everyone I think the takeaway here is you know make sure you keep receipts check your check your contractual obligations from both parties not just one side um I think you know unfortunately sometimes unless you fight really hard sometimes it just doesn't you know sometimes mm -hmm. it just doesn't go to plan I guess like this is this is one of the most horrible awfulest stories because it's, it's and it's like so overt it's not even like I feel like um like I didn't feel like like in some of the other toxic workplaces like it's much more subtle it's more like they work on your psyche um whereas this is just outright like fuck you I'm not paying you you know what I mean yeah <sighs> okay so if you could do it all over again what would you do differently honestly I'll take a closer look at the company you know do That's some little research do some background research yeah I'm so glad that you're going to the debt collector um, I'm curious to know what it happens. Keep us updated. <laughs> like, yeah, let us know. I will. Yeah, who will? Yeah, let us know because obviously we we've got an interest in this now, right? Um, so yeah, I I'd, I'd be curious to know how it all plays out. But it's been going on for so long. Like you've been having these challenges oh, yeah. for so long, yeah. and that's you know that's stressful on your mental health and your well being as well. You know, it's not mm -hmm. even like financially like park that for a second but it's degrading on your mental health and your well-being sure. yeah i'm sorry this happened to you um are, i think maybe people would also want to know like are you currently working how are you getting jobs are you still working freelance 
Like, give us a little info about that. Yeah, I'm actually <clears throat> still working freelance, but mainly on LinkedIn and then on Indeed. That's where I get most of the clients from. But mm -hmm. I can say my new employer, I did the due diligence and the whole process is obvious that these are people who know what they're doing. You know, okay. you had the HR, we had the onboarding process, we had all that lined out. Right. Good. Yeah. I mean, that not to say that bigger companies are better, but there are hopefully a little more checks and balances. When it's a small sure. company, you know, it's somebody, they may not have all of that, the ability to do that, mm -hmm. you know? Like for me, like in my business, it's like I'm HR. <laughs> I'm... I'm also like, I do, I do a lot of things, but mainly mm -hmm. like for, for me, I let, I have my, I have employees that I just kind of let them do their thing. I try not to get involved. Cause it's like, if I knew mm -hmm. how to do what they were doing, then I'd be doing it. And clearly I don't. So yeah. any input from me is going to be like, <laughs> you know, I stick to what I'm good at and that's it. Stick to your wheelhouse. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Well, this has been an interesting chat. I'm sorry we couldn't get her to join. Um, the invitation okay. will stand if she ever wants to come on and talk about mm -hmm. her company. Um, so on. That would be so lovely. We would like it. I would like to know kind of where culture here, where that idea came from. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, it would be interesting. Hit us up if you're listening to this, which I'm sure you're not, because you probably preemptively blocked us, Catherine. Like she's pro she's like the blocking queen. She's probably <laughs> blocked us just after we even just said, "Hey, we want to talk to you about culture care." She's like, "Seems suspicious." Block. Block. <laughs> I swear to God. Um, <laughs> all so, right. So, well, where can people find you, Zuhar? If yes. they want to, if they want to recruit you in as well, where can people find you? On LinkedIn as Zuhura Miriam. I think I'll share the link with you. Okay. Sounds good. And we will put it in the show notes as well so people can come looking for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And it's been a great and if chat. And I'm... knows anything about this woman, also let us know. Oh, yes. That would be if fascinating. If anyone here has worked for my with employees. Her, has... <laughs> yeah, former employees, anyone, if it reaches mm -hmm. them, you never know who's going to listen to us crazies. Sure. Um, please reach out. We would love to hear more. And I think as like a closing remark, if, if heaven forbid, she were to be listening today, what would you like to say to her? Good Just one. keep your word. I mean, a word should represent who you are because mm -hmm. it can build or destroy you at the same time. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Let's Break Up, Toxic Workplace Stories. If you enjoyed our candid conversations and insights, don't forget to hit that like button, follow us on social media, and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform.